in terms of the issues which we're seeing are presenting themselves a lot with us today and in the media you read a lot about big data and the analytics tools that have become available uh, often quite cheaply for companies they're enabling companies um, especially with with large sets of personal data to unlock previously unknown value and hidden value in those data sets and that, as I said that's because a lot of the algorithmic tools available are becoming um, they're almost freemium at this stage for some so as companies avail of the big data that they have and as they run algorithms across it to enable them to engage in predictive analysis around for example their customer behaviors they have to be very attuned to personal data issues um, because the data they have um, strictly speaking they're only allowed to use that for the purpose for which they acquire Acquired it, and not for some other purpose, which is now occurring to them. You know, five years after they captured their data. So a lot of the work we're doing is we're working with companies who have large data sets who want to optimize and unlock the value, um, but we're seeking to, to guide them along a route whereby they can do that, but in a lawful manner, and that often means revisiting their privacy policy getting the right disclosures in place, or often even taking a more simplistic approach by anonymizing the data set. And you can still, still unlock a lot of the value, you know, by using it on an aggregated level. So that's certainly one of the issues we're seeing a lot of. And I guess syncing up with that is the issue then of retention. So as analytics becomes more the norm and the analytics tools become more readily available, the natural instinct for organizations will be to keep their personal data for longer because, you know, one, with all these tools, you, can, you, you know, it, it's hard to even guess what I'll be able to do with this data tomorrow. But the data protection law cuts in the opposite direction and really doesn't want you to keep that data ad infinitum, but rather they want to, you to keep it only for as long as is necessary. So there's this challenge uh, where a lot of our clients are saying, we want to keep this data forever now. Look, there could be huge value in it. We're saying, well, strictly speaking, you need to have a retention policy around that data and you need to have deletion dates and you should only be keeping it for as long as is necessary to discharge the purpose for which you collected it. And again, you know, so we're trying to devise strategies with companies whereby they can, as I said, uh, have, have their cake and eat it in the sense they can comply with law and yet avail of the analytics. And again, a lot of the, the routes and the approaches we adopt are around depersonalization. Um, so if you can just work on the data at an aggregated level so that it ceases to be personal data, um, but you still have it on a de-identified basis, you can still perhaps unlock a lot of value. So th these are some of the challenges we're looking at. And then I guess, uh, staying with law and legal developments, we're looking at a set of data protection law in Ireland that has been around for um, since 1988. And in the next year or two, in Ireland and in Europe, it will change to being an entirely new set of laws. That certainly presents a lot of challenges to businesses. And what we're finding with the more diligent businesses is that they're thinking about those new laws now, rather than the day when they arrive in 18 months time, if you like. So, th so we're dealing with a lot of, uh, these new laws will be tougher for businesses that possess a lot of uh, digitized and, and personal data. So a lot of businesses are starting to kind of bring their compliance to um, the anticipated level uh, where it will be when the new laws arrive. And there's lots of new challenges in, in, in those new regulations. To date, Ireland has had some discretion in transposing European laws uh, because they've come as directives. And so the original data protection directive was transposed into Irish law in a reasonably favorable fashion. Uh, the regime, for example, doesn't prescribe a lot of fines or enforcement, but rather it suggests one amic the regulator amicably resolves issues, which is very good for business. In the same vein, when the revised cookies laws um, came into force in the last few years, Ireland looked at its margin of discretion around implementing those laws into Ireland and did a reasonably good job um, of striking a balance between you know, the end user interests and the interests of business. So yeah, I think insofar as there was a degree of discretion around in implementing those laws, the Irish laws are reasonably fair in that respect. But ultimately, like a lot of the European laws, they do require that when you're uh, deploying cookies, a website for example, one needs to prominently notify users that cookies will be deployed and secondly one has to get their consent. Now the real issue is well what's prominent notification to a user and what's consent? Can it be implied? If one is sufficiently notified and continues to use the website well isn't that implicit consent? So these are the, the, the challenges and um, but it, helpfully the Irish legislature 
did adopt one very interesting um, approach where they said consent could be given through your browser. So a lot of browsers have uh, consents now to, for cookies. And so uh, that may in fact be the solution, we think, in terms of striking the right balance. So to, to move the consent mechanism off the website into the browser. And I think that's where the work needs to be done by regulators in years to come to look at uh, in concert with browser companies, you know, to try and develop those technologies.